I visited a lot of countries in my life. However, there has never been a country that was close to Iran. If you land in another country, you land in another country. But if you land in Iran, it feels like you just landed on another planet. Four years ago, my pregnant wife Sophia and myself went on a 6,000 km road trip through Iran. While I was filming, Sophia did fantastic photos from our journey. With all the horrible things that developed after we left the country, I decided to go back into the footage and show you how Iran and its Persian people are really like. We went from Tehran to the mountains in the north, all the way down south to the islands in the Strait of Hormuz. What we experienced on this journey is still with us, and we just can't forget the people that are a victim of their oppressive regime. The first friends we made were our great hosts, who made a workout with us on the first day. They have their work life behind them, but since they cannot travel anywhere, they decided to make a homestay and travel with the stories their international guests would bring. Because of the sanctions, no credit or SC cards are working. Everything you need, you have to bring in cash. Tehran feels like a modern city with good coffee shops, amazing infrastructure, skate parks and people that are just enjoying life. We were surprised how modern Iranians are living in their capital. But if you look closely, you can also see signs of tradition and conflict. Amir, who I met on a train ride in Germany, was the one inviting us to Tehran. We met him and his wife in the Tokhal Mountains, which are just on the doorstep of Tehran. Here you find incredible Persian food, traditions and local music. From Germany? Germany? Uh, yeah. Germany? Yes. Both Germany, yeah. Germany. Germany. Ah, Alman. Alman, Alman. Play nice music for you. Okay, let's go. Tehran really surprised us and changed the stereotypes we had. We were just welcomed everywhere. Uh, video! <laughs> and to be honest, we had some doubts about traveling the whole country on our own. But Tehran gave us the courage to move on. Kazvin is a more conservative city, but when we arrived, we met a 17-year-old who brought food from his family. So we had dinner in the inner part of the mosque and made another friend. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. 
Masole is a mountain village which is one of the favorite places for Iranians to visit. Since nearly the whole of Iran is without vegetation, Persians just love to come to the mountainside and enjoy the fresh air. So did we. The Aldagla Rainbow Mountains were not to be found on any map. I just had one photo I had found and knew that it was close somewhere to Tabriz. So we asked the people in the little villages to help. They led us on the right way and suddenly the Rainbow Mountains appeared on the horizon and we couldn't believe our eyes. In another country this would be an attraction full of tourists, but here we were all alone at this unbelievable place. And after releasing the first short film, an Iranian sent me a photo over Instagram. He made that photo because it was so bizarre, seeing us standing all alone on this big mountainside. Tabriz is the biggest city in the north, where locals invited us in the park to dinner with them. <laughs> the Mama police overheard that, came to us and told us not to go, because the devil would be there. We went there anyways and did not see the devil, but made a lot of new friends. Lake Umea was the largest lake in the Middle East but it had shrunk down to only 5%. What is an ecological disaster is also a bizarre place where Iranians come to enjoy their free time. Kandovan is a city that is cut into mountain tuff, which is formed from the ashes of an erupted volcano. Water formed those formations from the outside, while humans caved in to live inside. Welcome to Koshan, welcome to Koshan, welcome to Koshan. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> thank you. Tourists often oversee Kashan and just pass by, but it is a city located in central Iran 
Steeped in history and tradition, it is truly a city that offers a unique blend of history, culture and natural beauty. Kashan is also famous for its guest houses that have a very special architecture with two floors. On the top you have a beautiful view and down below is a garden where you can hang out and meet local and travelers. Isfahan is considered as one of the most beautiful cities in the world. <laughs> I would say that there is nothing that comes to my mind that is comparable. Schöne Ferien. Schöne Ferien, before you. Mean you have a good holiday in Isfahan. Perfect. Perfect? <laughs> yes. Are you enjoying Isfahan? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everything is good. The weather is good. Yes. And uh, this world. This world. Yeah. See you soon. <laughs> See you soon. And Finland uh, Dungeon. Finland Dungeon. <laughs> mean too much thank you. Gern geschehen. Gern geschehen. Mean welcome to Esfahan. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you enjoy in Esfahan and just you laughing in Esfahan. <laughs> yes. I imagine the places around the mosque would be very serious places. But in Iran I was surprised that these religious places were actually like gardens for people to meet, play, eat and hang out. Nice. When we met those Afghan refugee kids that were all alone on this big square, I could learn that from fighting each other, they learned within minutes to cooperate and having fun on just one skateboard. <laughs> A skateboard is a beautiful tool to learn about falling, overcoming and dealing with the hurdles in life. Rise early. This is what we did for the famous Jame Mosque. All its beauty just for the two or three of us. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I'm not really a shopping guy, but the markets of Isfahan have the most amazing art and, and it's just being produced right in front of your eyes. And outside, you can find street art just everywhere. Persepolis is one of the wonders of the ancient world, whose ruins rest at the foot of mountain mercy. It was once the capital of an empire that ruled a territory from Egypt to India. The kings of the ancient Persians sought to immortalize their power by building epic places. But as always, the power of a regime will always fade and finally collapse. For this place to shine, our alarm ringed at 5 o'clock in the morning. But then you might find yourself in one of the most magical places that have ever been built. Yazd is a city in the desert with amazing architecture and a special feature. The city is known for its historic wind towers, which were used to cool buildings down long before the invention of air conditioning. The next place, a Zoroastrian temple, really felt like we finally landed on Star Wars Tatooine. Bam Citadel is built completely out of clay and looks like a sandcastle that was built by giants. Unfortunately, 2003, it was destroyed by a big earthquake where 27,000 people were killed, but luckily it is being rebuilt in all its details.
The Kalut Desert is known as the hottest location on Earth. Centuries of extreme water and soil erosion shaped these strange desert formations. Here we were, all alone, hundreds of kilometers around us, nothing except bizarre towers of sand. It was getting dark quickly, and we could not find our way back to the car, and we really got anxious. But suddenly we were seeing car lights in the far distance and knew in which direction our car was parked. We had incredible luck to witness the Ashura festival a 10-day mourning for the 7th century leader Husayn ibn Ali that was killed in battle. Muslims all across the world remember his sacrifice and stance on social justice. The rituals are so unique and bizarre, something to really remember. Keshem is in the famous Strait of Hormuz, where around 18 million barrels of oil pass through every day, making it one of the most observed regions in the world. But there are kilometer long remote beaches where you can find the freedom to take a swim if you take the risk. Because it's completely forbidden to do so and you could be thrown into prison. Iranian people have an interest for remote and hidden places. They are always on the search to find places where they can exist without being suppressed by their authorities. Not that we did not see enough magical places, but the island of Hormuz offered us still something else for the end of our road trip. The island is an erupted volcano, but its surface is covered with colorful ochre. The soil contains iron, which is used for spices that is used in the local food. That was also contained in one of the best meals we had in the whole of Iran. And when we arrived, we knew that we finally left planet Earth and arrived in another galaxy. It's like yoga, isn't it? <laughs> okay, you're good. <laughs> yes, finished. <laughs> Thank you.
It's just tragic to see how quickly things escalated after our journey. The younger generation had the motivation for a life full of hope and freedom. And we feel for you, our Persian friends, and hope that you are safe and somehow happy in this beautiful country that is held hostage by an oppressive regime. Free Iran. People ask me, uh, would we go back to Iran and should you visit Iran? Maybe you heard of the case of Benjamin Brie. He was visiting the same spots we did as a solo traveler, flying with his drone, same as I did. But he got thrown into prison for spying charges and is not planned to be released until 2030. He's just a play ball in a bigger conflict of Iran pressuring Western regimes and taking innocent travelers hostage. We met a lot of people on our journey who told us what they really think about the regime. But just keep in mind that we have to keep them safe and we reveal not any of that footage. Iranians, who mostly see themselves as Persians, really want to get rid of their regime. Sophia was feeling good while traveling, but after six weeks coming back over Cyprus, just enjoying beach life, we suddenly realized how much of our life, and especially Sophia's, was being restricted by the government rules. If you have a whole life under those restrictions, we can't imagine. <laughs> 